What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Now, look, I'm going to try to do something different. This is something new and this is something different. I want to review Project Runway. Now, look, what you're saying is you are already three weeks behind. Project Runway has been going on for a minute. It has. I am. But we're going to go ahead and knock these three videos out so I can get caught up. Um, and I say it's something new because I enjoy Project Runway, but I am no fashionista. And what always ends up happening is the stuff that I like, nobody else likes. And the stuff that they like, I think it's hideous. Every once in a while, we come together and we meet. But I just focus more on the stories and things of that nature. Now, we know that last season and this season, Project Runway was had been sort of revamped. I honestly don't know the whole backstory. I'm sure somebody will drop it in my comments. I don't know the whole backstory. But what we do know is that Heidi is gone, and so is um, um, Tim. Um, Christian Seriano is the new mentor, um, and we have three new judges. So, and I'll, you know, if you looked at last season, you know all of this. None of this is new if you looked at last season. Now, there are a few things that are different with the show, um, and I think we're going to see one of the things that I really, really, really don't like that I've noticed um, going on. And I've been watching Project Runway from the beginning. So this is, for me, what, 15 years strong or whatever? One of the things that I don't like that I'm seeing as a trend with Project Runway is that I'm starting to see that they're using people who have more and more experience. And we'll get into that as we get deeper into uh, some of the people who are on the show. Um, and, and one guy in particular. And I think it's going to play a huge part and how this season goes. And maybe that's what they wanted. So we start this episode off. Y'all know how they do. They bring all of the designers together. They had like a reception. They're at the TWA. Um, hold, well, it was originally the TWA um, hangar at JFK Airport. They since turned it into a hotel, which I had no idea. Um, I remember TWA when I was a kid. I remember seeing TWA commercials and things like that. So if you remember the TWA years, you know, you know, um, it was like a, I thought it was like a pretty big um, airline, but you know, it happens. But so the idea, the, the idea is that they were going to, they're talking about space exploration and how, you know, 20 years ago, people never thought about that they were going to be space hotels and people would be vacationing in outer space. But now it is becoming a reality, you know, for billionaires. And we know that probably 40 years from now, if all goes well, it'll probably be an everyday thing like going on a cruise is now. So a couple of things they did this first episode was one, they automatically on this first episode, they turned it into a group challenge. Well, not group, a pairs. So they told them we had to pair up and they let them pick their partner. Now, mind you, you don't know these people. You don't, you've never met these people before. Maybe some of these people might have seen each other in different places, but they don't know each other. So my first challenge, not only do I have to rely on somebody that I don't know, I have to pick that person. So if it doesn't work out, it's kind of like, well, you picked them. Um, so they're going to have to do two looks. The first look is space travel. You know, like when you have your airport outfits, you know, airport travel. And then the second one is cocktail hour. Like if you're going to the, the bar while you're on the spaceship or the, 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 the space hotel or whatever. Now, my mom told me, you know, back in the day when people would travel, they dressed up. I mean, they wore their Sunday finest to get on a plane. Now you wear the most, what is the most, I know when I'm getting ready to fly, I try to put on a pair of sweatpants and a t-shirt, especially if I'm flying somewhere far. If it's over a five hour trip, baby, sweatpants, a t-shirt. And the easiest shoes I can get off and on because I know I'm going to have to take them off. So I ain't nobody trying to be sitting there fooling with a whole bunch of sh shoelaces and all that other stuff. Anyway, so when you think of travel, you know, you got to take all that into consideration. So they gave them a few minutes to sort of continue to mingle. They had cocktails and everything for them. And it was like, all right, now you have a now that you know what the challenge is, now you can talk to each other a little differently than you might have been doing before. And ask the right questions and try to figure out, is this is somebody I think I might be able to work with? This is this somebody that I think their aesthetic, you know, will work for me or what have you? And so they did. 
And what we found out was, we found out a couple of things from some of the people, but the first person that stuck out, um, the first person that stuck out was a guy by the name of Alan Gonzalez. Alan is, he's the personality. Okay, Alan is the personality. And y'all know, if you pay attention to Project Runway, Runway you can figure out oh, who, please. Lord y'all, it's my mama, hold on. Sorry about that. So that is the, um, he's the personality of the show. Oh, what I was saying was, if you watch Project Runway, really a lot of these elimination shows, you can tell by the editing who are going to be the focal parts of that particular episode. For the first episode, we have 16 people. They are not going to highlight all 16 people. The people that are going to get the most screen time are the people that either A, were in the top and the bottom, or B, there's something about them that is going to play into how this season is going to unfold. So we see Alan Gonzalez. Like I said, he definitely is a personality. We see Delvin. Delvin wears a white lab coat, honey, while he is doing his, um, well, we don't know that yet. I got ahead of myself, but I might as well go on to finish now. And he likens himself to the Dior, um, the people who work um, work in the, in the house of Dior. That's what they do. So, of course, he's basically putting himself on that level of saying that's what he's aspired to be. So, um, the other person we meet that I, that is very interesting for this particular um, is Sergio. He, now, Sergio is the one that I said is going to be an issue. And I'm going to tell you why Sergio is going to be an issue. Sergio thinks that he knows more than, than Christian. He definitely feels like he knows more than... He definitely feels like these people are sort of beneath him as far as experience and what he has done. He feels like Christian can't tell him anything. So he's not open to mentorship. And he's probably going to end up irritating and annoying the rest of the, the people on the show. Here's why. He has already made, he has already designed for a lot of people, but the main person that he mentions is Billy Porter. And he designed the outfit for Billy Porter at the, I want to say it was the GLAAD Awards, but don't quote me on that one. But it's definitely an outfit that we have seen Billy Porter in. It was a showstopper, as most of Billy Porter's outfits are. I, now, see, this is what I'm saying. I have an issue with him being on the show because in my mind, I'm thinking for someone who already thinks he's got it figured out and he knows more than, than the designers and knows more than uh, Christian, why are you here? Second of all, do you really need a show like Project Runway to help you if you already have a client a clientele list that includes the Billy Porter wearing an outfit that is so recognizable. I'm going to try to find a picture of that outfit and use it as my thumbnail so y'all know what I'm talking about. But we're going to wait and see how that unfolds, honey. So, um, let me see if I can get to these uh, groups, honey. I was trying to keep... Look, like I said, there's 16 designers, so I think I have all of the groups. So let me go through my list. Sergio and Brittany. Now, Sergio... I just told you about Sergio. Okay. We had Jim and Asha... Oh, Jimmy. Shout! I can't read my own handwriting. Jen, Jen, and and Asha, and they'll be important as well. Jeffrey and Melanie, they'll be important. Now, Jeffrey is a sweetheart, but Jeffrey almost had a panic attack in mood. He was overwhelmed. He was trying to do too much, and I was really, really worried about Jeffrey. I said, "Oh Lord, Jeffrey ain't gonna make it." We'll get back to Jeffrey. D. Um, we have Tyler and Delvin. Tyler is um, a drag queen. He has also um, done um, a lot of work for other drag queens. He, he named some people that you probably would know if you heard their name. I didn't write all their names down. What was interesting about Tyler and Delvin with their model, they got a transgendered model, which I thought was very interesting. Um, Chelsea and Chavi. Shava, Marquise and Nancy, Brittany and Sergio. Did I already say? Yeah, I already said Brittany and Sergio. Alan and I can't pronounce her name. I'm not gonna lie. I think that's everybody. If I didn't mention them, they weren't featured, so it doesn't matter. Now, 
They go to mood. I already told y'all what happened down to the mood. Poor Sergio almost ended up with nothing because he couldn't make up his mind and he was running all over the place. And I think he might have gotten in line. I think Christian was counting to 10. Because, you know, as long as you're in line, you're fine. But I think he was count doing his, you know, countdown, his 10 second countdown when he finally went and got, um, when he finally went and got um, in line or whatever. So they get back to the workroom and they're trying to figure it out. Poor Allen done left some of his um, fabric down to the mood. And y'all know you just got to make it work. You got to deal with what you have. He was using muslin. They had to redo their um, their designs and everything like that. What we started to see was Jeffrey, as soon as Jeffrey sort of got in his happy place, which was the workroom, he sort of was kind of doing all right. Like I said, we saw the panic attack and mood, and it was kind of like, oh my gosh, what's going to really happen with you? But he sort of hit his stride once they got there. The two that we're worried about are Jenny and Asha. Asha is a full cover model. She is Muslim, and all of her designs deal with you know, women being fully covered, but she also sort of has that out of the box avant garde thing working too. So it's sort of a little different. It's not just someone being covered, but then you're adding these crazy color patterns and, and different materials and stuff like that. But they couldn't get on one page. Like they couldn't come up with ideas that were cohesive. And so they were worried about what they were doing, but it not being cohesive. Um, Christian came through and of course, you know, Christian does what he does. He tried to give people, you know, advice and whether you take it or not or what have you. And he went through the groups. Um, and there was, this was a two day challenge. So they did have two days and they gave him like an hour on that very first day to just kind of get themselves settled, unpack their bags, you know, get themselves together. And then they took them back to the house where they're going to be staying and all of that. So it was a two day challenge. So now at the end of the two day challenge, Dylan is laying on the couch taking a nap. He done. And Christian was like, yeah, I don't think you're done. Like, you might be done making the garment, but you're not done. He said, and I'm telling you, the judges are going to nitpick all of this. So even if you think you're done, you're just not done. Go cut, you know, cut some hems. Go look busy. And my thing is, I think Christian was really in a nice way trying to let him know. You don't want to look like this is easy for you because that's going to make it. Because here's the thing. The judges look at what's going on. They know what's going on. And they're going to end up giving him a hard time. Now, maybe not this week, but Dylan, you don't want to get that reputation, boo-boo. But he was just straight up taking a nap, honey. Like, I'm done. I'm good. The other one was, um, like I told y'all before, the one I told you we're going to be looking out for was Sergio. Because when Christian was trying to give him suggestions and stuff, you know, his in his confessionals, he was just like, I don't feel like he could tell me anything because I feel like I know more than him, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, hmm, it's going to be a problem. So this year they are going to do the save. Um, so Christian gets a save just like Tim used to have a save. They're going to be doing that this year. And... The also for this challenge, there was a this was a flash sale challenge. And if you're not familiar with that, that's something they added last season where periodically there are a few challenges where the winning garment immediately is on the Project Runway website that you can buy it um like immediately. Bam. I, like I can log on right now and buy that outfit. Well, I guess I could. Okay. So let's just get into top and bottom. Like I said, we are it's we have eight groups, 16 designers and eight groups. We're not going through each one. That is not my ministry. If that's the type of review you want, I'm sorry. That's not gonna be the review you get from me. I am not going through every single outfit, at least not this early on in the conversation. But what we had was we had the top. The top was Jeffrey and Melanie, Brittany and Sergio. So Jeffrey, the one that we were really worried, well, you know, looked like he was about to have a panic attack. And no, he did have a panic attack and moved. But him and his partner ended up being in the top. And then we have Brittany and Sergio. Brittany did this really, really cute jumpsuit. And I'm going to be honest with you. I liked it. So this is why I said sometimes I'm with the judges. Sometimes I'm not. I really liked it. And I did feel like it was something you could buy now. But it definitely did give you sort of a futuristic feel to it. And it was the way she accessorized it was really cute. 
she actually won the challenge. So, and she gets immunity. And her outfit immediately goes on sale. And I know Sergio probably felt some kind of way about it, honey. Because, you know, he just knew he had that thing all worked out and sewn up. Now, in the bottom, we had um, Asma and Jen. And then we had Alan and Di Di Diberg. Di I'm going to get her name right. Um, both groups were bad. Both groups were bad. But again, I feel like Alan was at a disadvantage because remember I told you Alan had left some of his material. And so I feel like he was at a disadvantage because I think what we saw was him adjusting to not having the material instead of he just did a horrible job. And I think that might have been the difference, to be honest with you. Um, As Asthma said she blamed it on her material. And, you know, at this point, again, we are 15 years in, y'all. Y'all know the kind of excuses that are not going to work on the judges. Saying you used the wrong material and you never used this type of material before and this material didn't do what you needed to do, that's never going to work with the judges because the judges are going to say you should have known. One, you should never start off with a material you've never used before. Two, you should know how this material is going to work or not work for you. You're a designer. These are the kinds of things you should already know coming into the competition. So, of course, that didn't work. And, you know, their looks just weren't cohesive. They just weren't made well. They didn't look nice. They were not complimentary, not complimentary to the to, to the um, models, any of that. It was just horrible. It just was horrible. And so as a result, Asthma and Jim were in the bottom. And this is how you know that Project Runway ain't playing this season. Both of them were sent home, honey. Now, they, we usually get at least one episode where both people are sent home. But it's not usually this early on, honey. Both of them are gone. So anyway, that's where we are. That's episode one. I'm going to do this this year, y'all, because, you know, I, I want to have stuff to say about some of these designers and some of the things that go on behind the scenes. And I'll get more into the fashions as we dwindle down. But right now with 16 people, it's just a lot. The, the review will be 45 minutes long. Okay. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. Talk to y'all later. Peace.